Hey Rick, I know traction is a great therapy out there, but a lot of the doctors uh, who are performing this therapy, they're having trouble with their belts in terms of getting them on easy, getting them off easy, and then the slippage when the patient is in it. So I, I know the core traction harness can help with all that, but if you could go over it with me and, and tell me how this can be a benefit. Be glad to, and you're exactly right. The When you're trying to do counter traction, it's, first of all, you've got a patient in probably severe pain. It, whether it's acute or chronic pain, the last thing you need to do is be moving them around a lot. I want to make it very simple to put on. Tighten the belts up and then not have the slippage. Because too many times when they start slipping, they know something's wrong. They start getting a little bit apprehensive. And the whole thing is they're supposed to be relaxed. That's why that's how traction really does well with a relaxed patient, not a tense patient. So I think when you see some of the features that are probably different than you've seen on a number of the belts, you will truly find that this is a very easy process for the patient and for the clinician. Now, how does this really hook up on the table? Well, and unfortunately today we're using a massage table, so this isn't, as you know, is not a traction table, but it is very much like most traction systems where this would go on the end of the table, this would go around the cushion, and this would give you your counter traction. One of the nice things about this belt, and Jason, you know, this is where the table would normally separate when they're putting the traction on, the pelvis is here, the, the rest of the body is here, so it's pulling in this direction and the table separates and that's where your traction comes from. So what this does is hooks on the end of the table and th you normally want this thoracic piece to be right at the split of the table, on, on the head end of where the table separates. We're able to adjust this length of the hook, where the hook goes in, and that puts this right here. That is really a one-time adjustment. But this will fit any traction table. We haven't found the traction table it won't fit yet. So it doesn't matter who your manufacturer is, but we put a better belt on. The other feature is this, this, the, the pelvic piece, we have indicators. So it's just a very quick visual when a patient comes up and they're gonna sit, they will spin around, and we're trying to make sure that these are aligned. It's very difficult on some belts if everything is aligned properly. So this is a very quick visual. You'll also notice the, th this red stripe. When we're getting ready to pull downward, it's just like a guy wearing a belt. It's, it stays right on top of the iliac crest. So, it, and you should never be afraid to feel the iliac crest to make sure that when we're putting the belt around, it's just like your belt. It's gonna hook on top of that and pull downward as the traction goes in this direction. So, a couple of things we've got, and you'd mentioned the slippage part. This material, and if you don't mind, just put a little downward force and try and slip this material in, in a direction. Try and go that way. This is trying to adhere to the, to the table, and that same material is adhering to the patient. So when we get them buckled up, and I'll show you that in a moment, but this material does not let them slip. The same thing here. When this is attached to the, to the patient, this is wanting to grab them, but this side is free to, to slide on this table. So the, the point here is, or your point as far as slippage, we have addressed that. And it's really with the materials that we're using. Okay, Rick, I, that looks great. I can see how this would reduce the slippage with the patient in it. But one of the other big concerns is, is how easy it is to get on and off this belt uh, on the patient. So, so how does this benefit um, compared to the competitor belts here. All right. Well, and, and the big thing is how can we very gingerly apply a belt, remove that belt, and again, we don't have the slippage aspect, but I think the important thing is having a very easy belt to put on. And if we don't mind having our patient come in, all right, Dean, I want, I'm going to ask you to spin around 90 degrees, keep your knees bent, and have your head down. Jason, you'd always want to kind of hold this just so the patient isn't moving them around. Now, Jason, this red stripe I was telling you, we go in, we find his iliac crest, and Dean, I need you to just push up, going towards the head, just about an inch or so. That's good. 
And so now we have our red line aligned with our iliac crest. And this is just a very simple way. So that's a great marker for the doctor. Who's Extremely. Putting this on exactly where it's going. And, and you repeat that each time. And so you always know you're doing it the same way. This is just, we've got our hooks to come across. That is just put on snugly. Most patients will say that feels pretty good because we're really just kind of bringing it in slightly. Then if you don't mind, so Jason, what we've done now, this is your, your good cinching, and all we're doing is putting this on. We're trying to put our O-ring really just right at the navel, and too many of these are real difficult to, to make tight. Well, one of the things we've done, and a very simple an easy way, and a good friend of mine taught me this. He knows a lot about horses. He taught me to lift, pinch, and pull down. And that right there is as tight as, does that feel comfortable, Dean? It's, good. it's very tight, it's not gonna slip. So now, I always like to hold the O-ring here just so that we have some modesty working. And we hook that. And this, of course, would go to the S ring on your traction. So now we're ready to do that pull. So this is done. For the counter traction, of course, our hook would be at the top. This is cut to go directly under the rib cage. And what we're able to do here is ask Dean, Dean, if you'll take a deep breath. Take it in and blow it out. Blow every bit of it out, all the way out, and do that. He's, as soon as he takes a breath, that's tight again. So it could not be simpler. We have not been doing all of this kind of stuff, trying to get things tight. We could put that on in a matter of 30 seconds, and we've not moved him around at all. So, and with the other clips, I mean, it's just a clip in, it's a belt buckle. It's really some of them are two O-rings, it goes through and back one, and they're real stiff and trying to get it undone. And I'll go ahead and show you getting it undone. By the way, he's also on a cervical pillow here, very soft. This really helps keep him comfortable. Too many times they're laying flat of a table. If you've got low back, you may have some cervical issues. It's just a very soft, and I'll show you another aspect of that when we get through here. If we went through the entire traction now, everything's done, more often than not. Now you'll notice, I've asked him to keep his knees bent. If you feel underneath, his low back is fairly flat. A real traction table normally has a, has a lock on it and you can raise this end. It's hinged here, but you can raise this end up. If you, and if you would put your, put your hand under his low back and just notice what happens as I raise his, his feet up ever so slightly, just a couple of inches, that should flatten. That is usually much more comfortable for the patient. Now, if traction was through, we remove that. We would unhook it from the machine, of course. And one of the very simple ways to remove this, we are not moving him around. It could not be simpler. Now we'll say, now he's ready to get up and go. If he was really acute, we could apply this as he is standing, just, just the lower belt gives him a lot of support and might make it easier for him to get on to and off of the table. So Jason, if we had a much larger patient that had more girth, we could simply place the extender in and this would go up to, I'm believing, pushing 60, 60 or so inches for a waist size. Now one of the things it has been asked is why would we, do we have one for the upper piece. The thing is, if someone has, is, is much larger than this, th the way we have the non-slip material both against the patient and against the table, more often than not, when we're applying whatever, let's just say this was a 300 pound patient, about half of that body weight is on this side of the table. So that's 150 pounds pushing down on a non-skid material. We're going to apply 60 or 70 or 80 pounds this way. The math does not work out that that 60 or 80 pounds is going to pull the 160, 150 pounds down. So you probably wouldn't even get involved even needing this upper belt. But it doesn't take much. And, and again, when you 
practice that ex exhaling and then as soon as he exhales it all and pushes it down and he takes a breath, it's tight. And, and so plus with the knees bent, you flatten out the abdomen area anyway. Absolutely. And again, all the visceral fluids getting moved away. You know, so everything about it. Now one, one final thing, and Dean, if you don't mind, if you could lift up. So Jason, the, the pillow that we're using, of course, for doing cervical, I mean, sorry, for doing lumbar traction, it makes it much more comfortable. Dean, you might tell me that this was more comfortable than laying flat, is, I, I would assume. Yes, but the other part about this, certainly it works for traction, lumbar traction, but it's also for cervical traction where your cervical device would go in, protect your table, very soft foam. I mean, I think you'll find that's really soft. It doesn't get in the way of, of doing the controls on the cervical device, but it also supports this low, this curve that most, you're in about a 25 degree angle in doing cervical traction. You can normally run your hand and part of your arm underneath that and they're not supported at all. So this has multiple features. I will tell you, and I'm not gonna show you right now, but we can do this exact same thing if the patient was more comfortable prone, we could do traction in the prone position rather than supine. And everything we're doing is exactly the same except they're face down. And of course, your traction is on a straight plane, a level plane, not at the same angle that you're doing with their, when they're supine. Well, this looks terrific, Rick. Um, but real quick, what are the advantages of this belt one more time over the competition? All right, the lack of slippage uh, is, is probably the most important thing. It wants to adhere to the table, it wants to adhere to the patient, and, but ease of application, putting it on, and removing it without moving the patient at all is, I think, where I see it beyond anything else I've ever seen with traction. Okay, so you demonstrated it to me, but let's really see how fast it is to take on and take off. Though. All right, I, I really work from this side of the table. So all we're doing is we're putting this belt on. We now put our cinch belt on, put this in the center, we do that nice lift, pinch, and pull, we would attach that to the S hook, Dean if you don't mind take a deep breath and start blowing it out, I want every bit of it to come out, all the way out, and boom. We're ready to start traction. Okay, and then when the patient is done? So patient is over, again, I'll be, you wouldn't be surprised how often you come back and they're asleep. One of the first times they've had some really nice relief in quite a while. This comes off, we remove the hook. Very simple way to relieve that. Now again, we could get them up at this time with the belt, but if we weren't gonna do that, then you'd want to instruct them how to sit up. I'd want to keep their knees bent. They would spin and then stand up and get off the table. This looks terrific. Thanks, Rick. Sure, man. It was good to see you.